All right, so Q&A time. Uh, this Shad, you remember from Facebook. I don't know if I'm getting this right. Okay, so a couple people suggested possibly an IKEA kit. Um, that's false. I wouldn't do that. I don't think they make stuff like this at IKEA, especially not this well built. Um, so it is it is cedar and steel on the outside for the paneling. Uh, that's just sheet metal roofing. It's not a roll up door, although that would be a great idea. Wasn't in the budget this time. This is a prefabricated exterior door. I didn't make it. So I want to specify that these are uh, in light, low voltage sconces that we have here that go in. Now I'm going to give you a look inside and. As you see, he, um, he's been finishing this up. So I didn't realize that the uh, floor, he's a flooring guy and he knows his stuff and he's doing the walls himself. But I just wanna show the rafters, 16 OC, the, the studs on the walls are all SPF 2x4, 16 OC. This is just a shed, less than 10 by 10. Now, I notice he doesn't have any vapor barrier there and he really should have it at this rate, especially if we're gonna heat, heat and air conditioning inside here. So if it's gonna get real hot, or real cool, or the temperature difference from outside to inside is gonna be dramatic. You need to have vapor barrier. Now what we have uh, for this structure, you'll notice is, uh, is siding is on the outside. Then we have the strapping that goes over the Tyvek, the house wrap. And then we have the sheathing, and then we have the studs. And then in here we have the paneling. You really want vapor barrier on the inside before the paneling goes up um, to avoid mold or mildew growing inside the walls afterwards from condensation. Um, from the temperature change from outside to inside. So I did tell him about that, but he may have decided to skip that step or maybe he didn't realize how important it was. Um, I'll just run it by him, make sure he knows. Now, uh, we always run electricity into our sheds. We do a concrete foundation, we do a pour, four inch thick reinforced pad. Um, it's the best, ty best type of uh, a foundation to have for a shed, if, if, if whenever possible. Now, um, we usually do the roof out of, um, we do a nice flat roof with a with a uh, eighth over over twelve slope, and we actually blue skim the whole thing and flash the parapets before we even put the roofing on, just to make sure there's zero leaks. And if the roof material fails, we know that our frame is watertight anyway, so we won't have any problems. Um, again, we run electricity. It's a really good idea. It doesn't cost too much. And in the future, if you want to put heating, you want to put AC, you want to turn this into a little room or an office. Electricity is really all you need to be to live a, a first class human life. Um, so yeah, and of course we'll be we'll be venting and putting this up, and I'm gonna explain to him what he wants to do to avoid uh, mildew and, and maintain airflow in here uh, above the ceiling. So other than that, yeah. So no, not IKEA. Yes, we custom built it, and yes, I wish it was as fast as the IKEA one would have been. But these things take a little bit more time, especially with the surroundings. I'll show you something else to, to, to show you what you can't get with a with a prefab set. So, oh, we did a little purple over there too. Now look here. So we're right up on the ground. We're just slightly off, just enough to get water to drain. But the ground here is on a slope. And we have it cut right with the ground, level with the top. We have a nice flat roof here, pot lights in there. You won't get that in a prefabricated set. Also, uh, we built a little panel for the service. This is for the pool, for people who are asking that question as well. Um, he didn't have the shelter for it. He wants to use the shed for something else, not just to store pool equipment, because um, that would be wasteful to have such a nice shed just to put stuff in. Um, so this is all just a pool stuff. We built this little cedar kind of thing just to kind of decorate, give him somewhere to mount. And then, yeah, we did the siding. and. Another thing is, you know, the way it's built, custom to the ground. Even the concrete pad was custom to the slope here. So, um, yeah, I won't, won't get it from Ikea. But uh, I appreciate everyone asking the questions. And hopefully that answered some things. And here's just a quick look at some of the trim details we did with the cedar here. Underneath the door, just to get everything nice and jammed up real good. Um, these are the little things that we take pride in, is, is just making sure things look well finished. Now you go up, it's the same thing. We cap it all off, we make it look legit. Now I wanna go over some of the framing basics with you too while we're here, while you're listening. So what you'll see here is, uh, you won't see it. I guess here you'll see, this is the king stud here and this goes up all the way to the plate at the top. And then here we have the jack stud and the jack stud goes up underneath it and it's what jacks carries the beam load that goes over the head of the door and there's one on either side and then there's a king on either side of that and those are the cripples up top that stop the plate from sagging and carries that load so the beam that's above the door 
is actually uh, two two by sixes and a piece of uh, PT plywood put together to make a, a three and a half inch by six inch beam that we slip in over the top on top of the jack studs. Now